it's a beautiful day today the skies are clear and it's quite cool sitting in the shade so here i am as if giving us a reprieve from the past few days of really hot days we are given a relatively cool 20 25 23 degrees celsius so it looks like we're allowed to rest a bit the calm before the storm and also if you haven't noticed yet this is the 100th episode of let's plant I'm just checking my schedule and it looks like by the time this episode publishes, this 100th episode, it would be a few days, just a few days before Christmas. So to all of you watching this right now, Merry Christmas! Now that it's Christmas, I'm pretty sure that you're expecting to receive some gifts, presents. Either that or you're the one giving the gifts and presents. Either way, there's gifts and presents to be given. And as a collector or if you know a fellow collector, you're likely to get some plants. So if you're lucky enough to be receiving plants or planning to make someone else lucky by giving them plants, I really hope that you're getting what you really want or you're giving someone else what they really want. And this is where our wish lists come in. All of us collectors have wish lists and if you don't have one, you're probably lying. I really hope that you get to take a lot of items from your wish list this Christmas. And if not, go ahead and Tick off some items. Go go crazy. Buy yourself something. No doubt some of the things in your wish list is what people would classify as rare. And in this episode, let's discuss what exactly rare is. <laughs> Merriam Webster defines rare as number one seldom occurring or found also known as uncommon number two marked by unusual quality merit or appeal otherwise known as distinctive or superlative or extreme of its kind and number three marked by a wide separation of component particles thin like rare air i guess number three does not apply and in this case there's there's still a fourth definition here cook so that the inside is still red doesn't apply unless you cook succulents but they don't go red so let's stick to the first two definitions again seldom occurring or found and marked by distinctive quality merit or appeal or superlative or extreme of its kind the reason why i start by quoting the definition of rare is that for some reason the definition of rare differs from person to person so my definition of rare is not may not necessarily be the same as your definition of rare and i see it quite a lot so there's a disconnect in our vocabulary, our lexicon. I've seen people use various terms to classify, to qualify the perceived rarity of the plants. And I say perceived because again, this is a matter of perception. What I think is rare might be different to what someone else thinks is rare. So by laying down the dictionary definition, at least we have a common ground to start with and we're going to expand from there. So what exactly makes plants rare? I can think of a few things, but if you think about it, it all boils down into this concept of supply and demand. So let's look at each interpretation of it first. Speaking with a lot of people, I think a very popular classification, a popular criteria for, for the rarity of plants is the price. I think people place a specific, a certain threshold on the price before they would consider them rare. They would be placing things into tiers, so the top tier would be rare. Below that would be uncommon and further down would be common. And to muddy things even further, they add various arbitrary labels such, such as semi-rare, which in itself is an oxymoron because a thing is either rare or not rare. No such thing as semi-rare. I guess people just want to distinguish a plant from everything else. Just give it, just elevate it somehow. Not necessarily put it in the rare category, but give it a little niche of its own. And I'm pretty sure you see that online in various groups. Another reason I can think of is mutations. So there are some mutations that are desired and some are maybe not as desired. And desired mutations are things such as variegation and monstros, cresting. I think of those three, the variegated mutation is the most universally desired. This is very visual and it has to do with colors. And a lot of people are very attracted to colors. So having streaks or different colors on a single plant, you know, sets, really sets it apart from normal plants. And I can understand why a lot of people put a lot of stock 
a lot of premium and why they think variegated plants are at another level. And it really makes sense because variegation is a mutation and if it is stable, it's a stable mutation, it doesn't revert to the original color, then this isn't a natural occurrence which means that these are few and far in between which perfectly fits in the definition of rare. It's not every day that you get a mutated form of plant growing variegation and keeping the variegation because if you propagate enough, chances are at least one of the plants that you grow would be variegated but keeping it variegated and fully variegated like that and by fully I mean all of the leaves are variegated not just one side that's a really rare occurrence and once you manage to get a full a complete variegation then you would want to replicate that exact plant you could not propagate it sexually via seeds you'll have to do it vegetatively like leaf cuttings or tissue culture which I have no idea how it works yet another highly prized mutation would be of course cresting and a lot of people are after crests. Again, like variegation, cresting does not normally happen. This is not a normal type of growth and you don't see that happen every day. Particularly in the case of stable crests because there's a huge chance that crested plants would revert to normal but if you manage to get a plant crested all the way until it's really mature, until it gets big, that in itself is a, that is a feat in itself and again, it fits squarely in the definition of rare. It's hard to get crested plants that big. You don't often see plants that big, that mature, and crested at that, so it's rare. There's also other forms like the monstrose and maybe the reverse, a, a runt version, a tiny version. Some plants that usually just have flat leaves spontaneously go curly or ruffled, which happened to me because in my case, I've got an imbricata whose leaves started growing upturned. I'm hoping it is stable because that would make it rare. So as far as mutation is concerned, I still think it's a basic case of supply versus demand. Stable mutations are really hard to come by and that makes the supply really low and everyone wants them. It makes the demand really high. But I've said this many times, I find the regular form more appealing than the mutated form so I guess I'm lucky. And this leads me to my next point which is the perils and the dangers of rarity. A lot of predatory sellers, I call them predatory because they are preying on newbies, on the newbie collectors or those who do not know better. But this is all too common, this happens everywhere, especially on eBay. You would see a lot of sellers just tack on the word rare on a plant even though I guess in my, depends again it depends on where you are. But for some plants that I would not even consider rare, they just tack on the word rare and add a premium to the price. It might sound unethical, especially if you know that you can find these plants, someone else is selling these plants at a much lower price. And I usually would like to think that maybe this will just self-correct, the market will self-correct. People would be doing the research, they would be canvassing, looking everywhere, looking at other sellers. They would search around the web, using Google is free. It costs nothing except a bit of your time. But unfortunately, and I can't blame them, there are there are people who are really after convenience and would not put forth the time just searching, you know. They could have saved by going with another seller rather than fixating on that one seller. This thing still gets sold. I'm also of the opinion that I do not have to dictate how other people should be spending their money. But on the other hand, I'm of the opinion that the, this buyer should, be, should know what they're getting into. They should be doing their homework. They should know the real value. If not, at least they should know the market value of the plants. So if you are doing your part by helping the newbies spend their money wisely, then good on you. I usually do not comment on posts about overpriced plants unless it is a total ripoff. So I guess I should not push that point further, but you know, it's a downhill slope. However, I do advise my friends and you're my friends. So make sure before you check out that plant marked as rare, you should at least check in with your collector friend and have their opinion, you know? Because chances are they would know if something is actually rare or just pretending to be rare. And the bottom line is if you're still willing to pay for that price even knowing that you might be able to get it cheaper somewhere else if you look hard enough, then maybe you're the type of person who finds the convenience factor a big thing and I don't really blame you for that because sometimes I'm that way. When I see something and I know I really like it, then I just go for it. Because in my mind, I sometimes tell myself that I might not see it again or at least it will take quite a while before they become available again and I want it now. 
in those cases I would pay the little bit of premium just to get a plant now. I'm totally fine with that as long as I know what I'm getting myself into. Then of course there's also these predators who go after people who are hugely into mutated plants. I'm pretty sure you've heard of the painted plants or even the plants with fake variegation. Those are separate topics in itself and if you do not know better then you might be lured into buying these and there's usually a premium on the price but this look is temporary you are paying for a normal plant which is otherwise looking like a different plant temporarily so i think the key here is just to inform just to make the buyer aware what they're going getting into if they purchase a painted plant then they should know that in a few months or even just weeks the plant will outgrow all of those painted leaves and they would be left with a regular looking plant and they should not be surprised about that. My stance on these things is that we should educate the buyers, we should educate each other. Maybe someone really wants it. While we experienced collectors might be repulsed, reviled by it, we should not turn it down. I think our first reaction should not be to insult or belittle the buyer for even being interested in those types of plants. Instead, we should educate them or tell them that this look is temporary and make sure that they really want it before they purchase it, you know, just make them aware of what they're getting themselves into. Again, there's this very arbitrary classification plants. There's the rare, then all of those layers in between, then the common. For now, let's boil it down into rare, uncommon, then common. Although using those terminologies, there should only actually be two groups. It's either rare or not rare. But for the sake of the lower tier of the not rare, let's break it down into two, into uncommon and common. Because there's a lot of gray area in between. It's not just a either or situation. So going by the classification of rare, uncommon, and common, if you understand what makes the plant rare, then you should be willing, you should expect a premium on the price. If you know that a plant is common, then you should be wary. You should have alarm bells running when you see the plant being sold a lot higher than it usually is or if you just have a gut feeling that it is it seems to be expensive as for the middle ground with the uncommon might be might be really hard to quantify and it depends on a lot of factors one of which is what are you willing to pay so i guess that is something that you just have to go by feel maybe it is worth it maybe it isn't we don't know but in my case, I do not like to think of things in those three categories. As far as I'm concerned, there are only two categories of plants. And the first one is, I have it. Second category, I don't have it. For the have it category, there's nothing else for me to do because it, they're already here. For that I don't have it category, that's where a balancing act occurs. For the haven't category, I'd like to weigh things in a scale of want yes please nah Ugh. for of course for the want category as soon as i see that plant i'll definitely buy it so if a plant crosses my threshold for want then it definitely has to be in my collection if it goes into the yes please i might purchase it i would not necessarily go out of my way to get it i would appreciate it as a gift but it's still something that i would like to see in my collection nah I don't have a strong opinion of, about the plant. I would still appreciate it as a gift, but if I had the choice between that plant and another plant that weighs more in this scale, then I'd rather pick that other plant. And in my case, that's usually what happens when I have a choice between a Haworthia or an Echeveria. Don't get me wrong, I think Haworthias are cool, but if I had limited budget, I'd rather spend it on an Echeveria because that's what I really want. So that's my meh category. And finally, the... Ugh category those plants i would avoid i do not want them in my garden if you're going to give me one i'm going to politely accept but as soon as you're gone it's going to burn <laughs> we collectors really find it hard to say no to plants even the plants that we have multiples of i think i will still be happy if someone would give me an elegance even though i have a lot of them already and as someone who collects a lot of echeverias and posts a photo of them every single day Hashtag daily Echeveria. I'm pretty sure I'll come to a point where I find it tedious, especially with all, all of the hybrids coming out and a lot of them look the same. I even had a hand at trying to create my own hybrids, which if you follow my seedling series, you'll find it. But yeah, a lot of hybrids look alike, especially since there's a limited uh, set of species to choose from. And this got me thinking that 
maybe I should demote the Echeveria hybrids in my haven't list. So instead of having them in want, I'll put them down to yes please. And instead focus my wants on all the Echeveria species. I think my new life goal as an Echeveria collector is to collect all of the species, not the hybrids, the species, have one of each. It's going to be hard because true to type species are really hard to come by and you never know about the purity of the species so I'm not going to be too strict about it as long as it resembles the description or photos, the definition of the species itself, then I'll take it. So far I have a few, well more than a few, I have a handful of species in here. The rest are just various cultivars or hybrids. But mark my words, I'm going to collect them all. Gotta catch them all. So my new life goal as an Echeveria collector is to collect all of the species. I'm going to use ICN website as my wish list, the species list that would be my new wish list. And it would be interesting to see how long it would take me to collect all of them. Especially at my current pace where I just buy them when I see them. I do not go out of my way to search eBay or various auctions just to get them. It would be really interesting and it sounds like a really long-term goal. I don't think I'll be able to collect all of them or even half of them within the next decade but who knows, who knows what will happen. So this Christmas and maybe even New Year, I hope you reach deep down and clearly define the types of plants that you're after. Maybe you could reshape or redefine your collection range, make it a bit narrower, make it wider, I don't care, it's your choice. But set a clear direction of the things that you would want to collect. If you're just starting out, I would definitely recommend that you collect across the board just to see, you know, just to see what types of succulents there are. And eventually you will figure out which types of plants you really like. In my case, I narrowed it down to a few genera. The main one would be Echeveria, followed by Aeoniums, then Raptopetalums, Pachyphytums, Sedums, and all of the intergeneric hybrids. I collect a narrow range. I challenge you to see, to look deep down and see if you could do the same. That might help you down the line, you know, make things cheaper for you. And yeah, let me know what you think. And with that said, this has been quite a monologue. Again, have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. I'll see you next episode. See you in January. Bye. Special thanks to my Patreon supporters at Oscarino, Julie Seal, Snap Kui, Lorena Noti, Camila Baez, Linda Leal, Gwen Ott, Jesse May, you too, and everyone else who pledge on Patreon. Thank you so much. And finally, you can check out my Instagram. That's at SiriscaPage. And I post a photo of an Echeveria every single day under the hashtag DailyEcheveria.